everybody, Josh Jr. here again. I have a wonderful treat for some of you. You're going to really like this here. I am here speaking with, going to be speaking with Brad Taylor of Shiny Shacks Vintage Trailers based out of Salem, Oregon. And he has got a treat for us. And what we'll do is we're going to have him talk about it. And I'm just going to show you things as he's talking about it. So sit back. This is going to be a real treat, everybody. Okay, so we got Brad here. Go ahead, Brad. Go ahead and tell us about this thing. Alrighty, this is a 1953 Airstream Flying Cloud. Now, back in the day, if you told the model number or model name of your trailer, it told you the length. In 1953, the Airstream Flying Cloud was 20 foot. Uh, what's neat about this trailer and why it draws a lot of attention, in the early 50s leading up to 56, you had 13 panels across the end cap. So, measuring from here all the way around to the other side, there's 13 panels. Uh, in the in mid 50s, it switched over to seven panels. Mid 60s, it went to five. They're still manufactured with five panels across the end caps today. Uh, this particular trailer we saved uh, about a decade ago off a sheep farm out in Brooks, Oregon. Uh, got it freshened back up and put it on the road, and we've been tooling around in it ever since. We hit about 15 rallies a year with it um, from California up to Canada. You can see there's a lot of road dirt on her. One of the neat things on this trailer, when we found it, it was about 90% original. It's still got glass lenses, no plastic involved anywhere on this thing. It's got the door in door. It's a relatively special feature to this vintage, uh, this, this era. Uh, later on in the 60s, they ended up getting rid of the door in doors. Uh, you can open it up so you have a screen. Uh, continuing around the back in 53, this uh, back end was symmetrical to the front. And in 1954, the Flying Cloud actually became a 21-foot trailer. They extended the rear out here one foot and sloped the back end. You effectively got no extra room inside. It was still essentially a 20-foot trailer, but they were able to call it a 21-foot. Again, 13 panel, all glass lenses. And here in Oregon, they allow us to register this as a classic vehicle, so we have vintage plates on it, one-time registration. Uh, you'll notice the Blue Boy here. Uh, trailers in the early 50s, the Airstreams, had no tanks on board. So they were all park models and had to be hooked up to external or shore water and sewer. Airstreams themselves were never sold polished. They were sold with raw aluminum that eventually oxidized. Aluminum is a type of metal that oxidizes and they turn a dull gray. When we found this, of course, it was heavily oxidized. Uh, we polished it. Uh, so when you see a shiny Airstream, that's not how they came across from the factory. All those, none of those seats are attached. No. Like they're in modern trailers. That's a fact. They're floating seats. They're called click clacks because they kick out and turn into a bed. Mm -hmm. okay. So you remove the table out of the way, you click clack the couches, and boom. Very good. Um, they do move around a little in transportation, but not by much. And then the money shot. Ah, that wonderful stove. Wally Byam, the inventor of Airstreams, was an incredible marketer. Put that stove directly across from the door I am sure he sold hundreds of trailers based on that view alone. Uh, beautiful enamel and chrome stove. And the brand, by the way, is AB. You can see the little AB on there. With the matching hood. Yep. Just incredible. You don't see things like this. 90% no. original inside there. Those are all the original cabinets for Mica. And so part of the sub four work you did is that you, of course, put pergo type flooring in, the, in there? Yes, yeah, that was actually uh, removed from our house and we had this extra flooring. It was just enough to do the inside. 
Uh, originally this would add a vinyl floor. There is some remnants of it left inside some of the cabinetry. But, um, with Airstream, since they're aluminum constructed, aluminum skinned on the outside, aluminum skinned on the inside with aluminum framing, the only thing that rots on them is the wood floor and the wood cabinets. Still with the original bearings. Still has original bearings. Yep, I pulled them open, re-greased them, put them back in. Wow. Yep. That is unusual. Original hubcap or is that after? Uh, that's an after bit. Okay. But those are the original rims. Okay. Yep, original rims, original axle. It's on a leaf spring. And that's actually the original door lock and door knob. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's that's wonderful little light. And the neat thing about this light is it looks like an 1157 12 volt bulb, but it's a 110 bulb. That's a 110 bulb. It's a 110 bulb that looks like an 1157. Huh. And I was able to find it burned out after a few years of use, and I was able to find it in the Vernonia hardware store in Vernonia, Oregon. The guy huh. the guy asked me if I could help if you he could help me with anything and I and I said, sure, just kind of off the cuff. Do you have an 1157 that's 110? And he goes, well, maybe over here. Covered in dust, he had about four or five of them. I bought them all. <laughs> you don't find stock like that. Well, this is just an incredible piece of work. This is a 53, we also have a 54, 55, a 56, and a 62 flying cloud. And on the screen door, if they're torn, because, and I, when, when this gets torn, I have to replace it, it's kind of stretched out. You have to drill out all those rivets and take this door apart. And as you can see, it's a four, four pieces on the back side here, just to replace that screen. What about on the window? Uh, on the windows, they're actually almost as obnoxious because you have to take out you can see the screen goes behind these guys yeah so you have to take out this framing which i see it's riveted in yeah yep. and so you have to drill those out and replace them with screws later or re-rivet i mean we do that we do there's three different types of rivets um, buck riveting like these require access to both sides you have one person on the inside holding the buck and the other side other person out here holding the rivet gun uh, there's also then pop rivets, which are ones that most people are com uh, familiar with, right. and, and that's a, a one-man operation with a pop rivet gun. Uh, then there's Olympic rivets, which look like buck rivets, but they're, they are installed like a, a pop rivet, and then you have to shave them to make them look like a buck rivet. There's no, pop, uh, there's no Olympics on this trip. Uh, trailering, working on his grandparents' sheep farm. And, and you found this on a sheep farm? And I did. <laughs> kind of ironic, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> but he stayed in one of those shepherd's wagons. You know, the okay. Well, Brad, I appreciate the time on this thing. This is incredible. And actually, the other thing that should be denoted, yeah, because everybody always asks this question, what's up with the big red numbers? That has nothing to do with the VIN. That's our club membership number. So that number is related to us as the owners, not to the trailer itself. So we have multiple Airstreams. All of our Airstreams have that number on Okay. What's the next project on it? On this? Yeah. Um, actually, nothing. We camp in this one. Well, okay. I, I need to do a lot of work on it, but it's too busy. Too much on the road. I need to reattach the propane lines because I disconnected them recently okay. to redo them, and I need to, need to reattach them. Well, Brad, thank you. I appreciate it. You're indeed welcome. You have a great and glorious day. Hey, everyone. So that was a fantastic vintage Airstream tour. Brad did a fantastic job on rebuilding that thing. Yeah, there were some newer things in there. The four was new and he had a newer style refrigerator. 
but he also did mention that he has a, an original type refrigerator to go in it but his wife doesn't want it to go in there yet because the current one is working so there you go that wraps up another one so remember everybody everybody's life is an adventure then there's mine hey going on vintage airstream tours this is the adventures of jaws jr have a good one see ya